Welcome to this week's episode of Writer's Row. Um, we have with us myself, DC Wrighthammer, and on the other side is David Gain from okay. Canada. And we started this channel, Writer's Row. This is our second episode, so make sure to subscribe to the channel, um, like this video, and what we're going to start doing is looking at the comments, so make sure to comment below on any kind of writing topics you want us to talk about. We typically focus on the writing community on Twitter, writing in general, um, and writing concepts, as well as the business side of writing. So if there's something that you want to know about, you're passionate about, you'd like us to chat about for 10 or 15 minutes, let us know in the comments down below. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and roll into leftovers this segment is going to basically summarize what we talked about last week um and so i'm going to go ahead and hand it over to david gain to kind of give a quick summary i'll add anything to that and we'll go from i there. think you should do the summary you're always fantastic at this stuff but i i talk too much as it is and no that's good okay i'm gonna um, talk a lot so it's okay uh but we did talk about indie april and you described it as a microcosm of the writing community why do you why do you say that I think it it basically has every element that you find in the writing community all summed up into one. You've got people posting inspirational posts. You've got people posting their book blurbs and links. And then you've got people who are kind of against that. Um, there's a little bit less of that. Normally, people will call out spammers pretty quickly. But yeah. because these are isolated to individual threads... People aren't as upset about it, but some people are skeptical and some people don't care for it so much. So um, I think it's a good thing in general. I think it's fine. And I think it does provide opportunity for people trying to crack into the community. Um, you know, maybe they sell one book, maybe they sell none, but their cover starts to circulate. Um, their name starts to circulate. They might get a few extra follows. I think in the end, it's probably a positive thing. And I'm fine if people are skeptical of it. Did you... Have you heard of stories or did you find that you had an increase in sales because of it? Um, well, March was a weird month for me because it was my biggest month ever. Um, yeah. I haven't hit those numbers yet, but I've also been playing with pricing. Um, so I've seen a lot of sales. I've seen more Kindle Unlimited reads. Um, so people are picking it up for free on Kindle Unlimited and then I get paid by the page. Um like a half cent per page or something like that, which okay. we can always talk about later. Yeah. Um, so, cause I don't get that. So yeah, it's fun and not fun, but we'll talk about it. Okay. Anything else on uh, Indie April or last, uh, last episode? Uh, no, uh, I want to do a quick shout out to everyone who has commented and complimented us mm -hmm. on Twitter, as well as people who have commented on the last video. Mm -hmm. Um, they have been, it's been, in, it's been encouraging. Yeah. I, uh, you know, we, we went out of our way not to name names last time. And we'll probably still do that, even though we've got permission to call out some individuals. Yeah, oh, yeah uh, some. But like uh, Patrick Johnson really wants us to say his name on the show. Did you say Patrick Johnson? I think I said Patrick Johnson. Okay, Patrick Johnson did give us permission to say Patrick Johnson on this, on this show. So Yeah, I think so. so. Okay, so, but, well, there's a shout out. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you want to say something about Patrick Johnson? Uh, no, Patrick Johnson is Patrick Johnson. He He's as Patrick Johnson as one can be. And with that said, um, again, we're going to, we'll link to our video down below from last week. Uh, same thing with that one. Make sure to uh, give it a thumbs up and um, comment on anything that you see in that video that you like or anything else you'd like to see. That sounds great. You're doing fine, by the way, DC. I'm trying. You're, I'm trying you're, to do this do shit robot so much better. And, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'm just going to keep on throwing. We're a real YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. oh, okay. So, th so, this week's topic, we're actually going to talk writing because we are those people who do that thing. Um, and, well, I guess we're going to talk not writing or the concept of not writing yeah. um, why don't you so, just introduce the topic <laughs> um, so on writer uh the writing community and twitter um people will talk about writer's block um and they'll bring it up and it's 
somewhat um, uh, a topic that people don't agree on. Um, and so we wanted to spend this episode, the, the bulk of this episode, talking about writer's block um, for people who believe in it and for people who maybe don't. Um, and so, uh, so I'm going to actually hand it, uh, I'll, I'll be uh, talking to, to David about it. He's got some pretty strong opinions. And um, so it's, it's funny because you say that I have strong opinions, but do I really have that strong of opinions? Well, let's find out. Okay. Let's unravel this. Okay. So first so, off, what, what is writer's block based on the definition that generally is accepted? Uh, I think you need to feel this because I guess my strong opinions get in the way of it. Because I'll just say, like, let's put, put everything in place. Um, I'm, I believe that writer's block is BS. I don't believe in it. Um, and... So that makes me a bad person to define it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I but I but on the flip side, I also I know what like okay, this is my trouble. This is why I'm having troubles with this, is that uh when I was a teenager, I used to write all the time, and then I quit writing for 15 years and I didn't write and People would call that writer's block uh -huh. because I wanted to write, but I couldn't write. And what do you, what do you mean by you couldn't write? Uh, well, see, this is the thing, though, is that the more that you talk about asking those kind of questions, it comes out to the reason why I don't believe in writer's block. It's because writer's block is kind of a bullshit term oh i said it i don't know if i was supposed to swear but we're swearing now okay um leave it to the canadian to make that happen <laughs> yeah because my trouble is is that it, it isn't it's fear that's what it is okay um, th there's two versions in my head that happen that are writer's block there is the fear of putting something on the page and either somebody hating it or you feeling it's not good or whatever right there's yep. there's some sort of fear blocking you from doing the work uh the other thing is that i'll always ask people if they have us uh um what they are t telling me is writer's block is is it a story problem do you, are you having a trouble figuring out the way the story goes mm -hmm. because the idea is is that it's we can just sit down, we can start writing. It may not be good stuff. It may be the worst stuff in the world, but we can write. We can put stuff down on the page. And once you get it down on the page, then uh, I believe you can fix it and, and shape it and, and work on it, right? Still may not be good stuff, but it's the first step. And I'm, I, when I, because I'm a teacher, I'm always facing this and with my students. And I always try and get them to write if it's bad it's bad you learn from your mistakes you can either make it better or you toss it aside and you start fresh and you do a new one and you learn you take the lessons that you learned on the last one put it onto this one and improve and learn with through iteration right so that's my reason that i don't believe writer's block is real and i i'm always always really interested when i see somebody on Twitter who says, I've got writer's block. I want to know what it is. I want them to define it for me. And I'm, I'm always it like, I, I'm totally fine. If somebody can prove to me that it is not one of those two things, right? Because then it helps me understand it better. Um, but then also there's, I'm a, I'm, I'm a big fan of Seth Godin and he has this whole thing about, he doesn't believe in writer's block either. And he has in one of his posts that he says that the the term writer's block never existed until the 1940s. And his argument is that's when books um, started becoming popular. Everyone thought they could start writing their own books, make money. 
And yeah. then when they sat down at the page, they were like, oh, I don't know what to do here. And so then that got in their way. So I guess that that would be the other thing that I would say is not knowing how to write, right? Which is still, to me, just a story problem or a, like a, a problem that can be resolved and solved, right? The, the idea of something like slamming down, shutting, and you can't get over it. Um, I, the, my my general argument to anyone who I've ever had to um, work with in teaching or uh, just helped on the side is always just to get them to start working. The other thing I also am coming from is the the solution for me to get over uh, that 15 years of not writing was to write. And I got that from Julia Cameron from The Artist Way, who if you don't, if you're struggling or anything like that, I highly recommend picking that book up. Um, it's um, a little woo-woo for me right now, uh, nowadays, but she has this thing, this exercise called morning pages, which is, you know, every morning you wake up, you write three pages every day before you even like start the day or anything like that. And you just write, do that several times. And for me, that was the first step. And then the next step was I picked up um, No Plot, No Problem, which is kind of like the, the guidebook for uh, NaNoWriMo, which is the National Novel Writing Month, which happens yep. in November. Right. Um, and also Camp NaNoWriMo is going on right now as well. Um, I think it's going on still. I think so. You can, people can comment down below if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, do. Please comment. Yeah. I should just do like, wrong statements of <laughs> but um and and in that it was the what is it fifty thousand words every month uh yeah i think so nanorimal uh, yep. so it's been a long time but i i looked at it and i was like okay this is how many words this is how many pages i could and at the time i was i was in film and script writing and and that and i was like you know what i can do this i'm doing this already doing morning pages i can write three to four pages a day and write a script in a month. And so I did that and it was a horrible script, but I wrote it and that took me 10 days, not the month. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to do this again. And I kept doing it. And then around, I think it was around the second or third script. Somebody, uh, I had heard something that said, you know, do at least five to six scripts, see if you actually like it. If you do, then keep on writing. So I just kept on writing. And then I did, uh, and then I aimed for 10. So I wrote 10 scripts in one year, all first drafts, all really bad. But out of them, I took the first one that, or the, the one that I felt was the strongest and then started to work on it as a second draft. And also that, that one was the one that I took to my writing partner and said, can you help me out? Uh, just try and make shit, make, uh, give it some shape and some story, and that's how we started working together as well. So it it all kind of like came from just doing the work. And yeah. so and and it, I also find it interesting when you brought this up. And I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm going <laughs> to finish it up right away. But this week uh, I I've been really really stressed, and um, we're we've got like our deadline of when we need to get our fourth book out. Um, and that is is everything like we know when we want to release it. So then everything has to fall into place for that, um, for the printing and the editing and everything like that. And so I'm behind on my schedule and I was really stressed out. And I went for a long run yesterday and I kind of came out of it and said, you know what? I forgot the number one rule, which is get your butt in the chair start putting words on the page, right? And as soon as you do that as your first step, then everything else, like to me, there's a, there's a, I think it's John McEnroe used to, who was a tennis player, yep. for those who don't know. Um, you used to, yourself, when he go was on. having troubles, what? You're dating yourself, go on. I know. Uh, when he was having troubles on the court, um, he would go and say, this is the racket, this is the ball, use the rack to hit the ball over the net, kind of simplify it as much as possible. And to me, that's what I have to do is 
go back to the very simplest basics and build it from there. So, yeah, um, that's I, yeah. When I when I started writing, um, it it kind of took me by storm, and I I pumped out the first book. That one was a little more difficult because I was new and I wasn't sure how to kind of manage my time. And so I started it late 2014 and I wrote through on and off for the next year and a half, two years. But in 2016, some, it just kind of took hold of me and I, I wrapped it up. Um, uh, I, I'll never forget. I finished my final, basically my final draft in March of 2016 I'm sorry, March of 2017. And I'm like, I think I have something here. And I took it to my wife and I said, um, I, I want to get this professionally edited and I want to self-publish it. What do you think? And we had no idea, you know, I think I know not that much right now. I knew exponentially less back then. And, um, and we went through that process and it went great. I thought it went fine. I wasn't great at marketing, but I was really good at writing. And in fact, rolled into book two. I had editing scraps from book one um, that I had wanted to put in book one, that I had wanted to write a more epic, larger story. And I realized as I was in book one that I could only, um, I, could, I could tell an individual story, a first person, very dynamic, interesting story, and not get in the weeds of the science fiction. Tell this character-driven, uh, first-person point of view story with some interesting techniques of writing and things like that. And I don't have to blur it with some of the more heavy science fiction and world um, world building as much. Um, so I did, I separated them out. The thing is, is that I had all that world building and heavier science fiction in mind. So when I, hit publish on book one, I was already 25,000 words into book two. And then that took shape really fast. And in fact, I had started writing that in April or May of 2017. And by March of 2018, a year later, I had a longer book two, like book two was longer than book one. And in a year I pumped it out, um, working a full-time job, having a family and all that. But I was, you know, just writing every night, writing every, you know, on my lunch break, I'd do storyboarding and, and moving the things forward and um, nights and weekends was just writing, writing, writing. And I pumped it out really quick. Um, and so I told my wife at the time I was talking, I'm like, look, writer's block is totally BS. I totally bought into that because I'm like, not only can, if I can do it, anyone can do it. But look at how much content there is out there. People are writing all kinds of books. Everybody's publishing. I'm like, look at how many scripts, how much is on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon. There, in fact, is a shortage, uh, or, or there's not a shortage, but they're like to find good stuff. Like they're just filling in content where they can fill it in. So the, the old trope of the writer who is just, you know, stricken with writer's block and can't get over it and can't get meet his deadlines or her deadlines and can't that it's just complete fiction like it's something made up to to romanticize being a writer right i feel like you're building up to a punchline here <laughs> it's not a joke um so so no I guess, no no in a bad way i guess sure well so i told you we have opposing opinions on this yep. so um, so I get to July of last year. We've talked about July as my Twitter month. It's the month that I really dug in and took Twitter seriously. Um, and uh, between that month and in August of the next, uh, you know, the next month over, something happened to me. And I don't exactly know what it is yet. I'm still I've been talking about it for six or eight months now um, that my creative spark is not there. Um, I had read like 22 novels. I was like having this reading frenzy up until August of last year. I, I've read like four books since. They're all indie books, so I'm happy about that. But I just haven't felt like reading, and I'm writing like 1,000 to 2,000 words a month. Like I'm not, I'm not writing much. I, I sit, put my butt in the chair. I put, bring the, the Word document up, and I'll type, and I'll get distracted, or I'll get disinterested really quickly. And... I was really worried to begin. Um, 
And um, there, there's going to be some concern there because I have established myself as a writer, but um, but something's missing. Something, like, I don't know if you've watched Transformers, but Optimus Prime loses, there's like a charge, like he has this like charge in him if you watch the movie from like 1988. Yeah. And he loses his charge, and he becomes not a leader anymore. I feel like I've lost my charge, or I'm Austin Powers, and I've lost my mojo. Um, you know, so all these funny analogies. But in the end, it, it's it's concerning. But I've I I started embracing it a few months ago, and I'm still sort of embracing it. Um, I'm I'm building my brand. I've got two books out that I spent yeah. four years, three and a half years, four years basically writing nonstop. Um, there is some burnout there. There yeah. is some, um, what, what did I just spend the last two and a half, three, four years doing? Like, is it even worth it? Um, you combine that with the anxiety and emotions that come with diving into social media and trying to make a name for yourself. Um, and I think that all of that combined has left me uh, my, my creativity is going to funny tweets. Now it's going to what's the next piece of content I can write to sell books as opposed to how can I write the next book? And I think that's where subconsciously I'm going, even though consciously I'm telling myself I'm a writer, I need to get down. Book three is calling me. Book four is calling me. I'm, I'm actually 53,000 words into a standalone that I want to finish and get out there so I can say I've done something outside of my series. Um, so I don't know if that's writer's block. It might be life block or something more general, um, but there's something psychological happening. It's not fear because I've had enough people read my stuff. It might be some of the story things you were talking about because book one and two are clear in my mind and where I'm taking the story now, it's clear. I've outlined it. It's there, but I'm not as confident as I was in book one and two. Maybe some of the story things you're talking about might apply to me. But if that's not writer's block, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just don't okay. know. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to say I, it is in the way. And the, the other thing about fear and story problems, they're just things that get in our way. Right. And if we can figure out what it is. And I always think with writer's block, it's this this thing that we can't. We can't name and we can't. Um, find a solution to right sure it's the thing so i do agree it isn't either of those two things and it's it is actually something that i've noticed uh in the past year as well um so i will give you that it is a different thing and you've proven me wrong and i love that I, no but I, that's fantastic yeah. but i still think it's it's one of those things where um, it is. I'm trying to think of what the right word is. Well, well, so it's. I don't think it's as simple as labeling it writer's block because if you do that, it's about the writing, and I don't think that's true. I think it's much more psychological. I think it's much more personal than just writer's block, and so therefore, I don't think some of the solutions you were talking about are make it that simple. Reading a book about writing or sitting in a chair and writing. No, don't do that. Don't don't read a book because that adds to it. Well, um, to something, yeah. For me it's stripping it's stripping out distraction cuz th that's yep. a part of it for me. Um I tend to take on too many things and get overwhelmed and then I lose the focus of the work, right? Um and last year, I had some external stuff going on, and that really ate into my writing time. Yep. Um, so, and that, that was like anxiety and stress and stuff like that. Yeah. So I do think anxiety, stress can get in our way, and we have to do like self-care to... Right deal with that like i always say you know put yourself first and even if it's writing although i do like your approach which is um not to not to 
put the fact that you're not doing the writing um, on that anxiety or stress or anything like that, because right. then that just makes it worse, right? Sure. Um, I do, I, <laughs> after the show is done, I do actually want to sit down and have a few other uh, yeah, conversations absolutely. with you about it, because I do think that um, one of the advantages I will always have is when I'm trying to wrestle with a story thing, mm -hmm. I have a writing partner to turn to and have that conversation with, right? Um, but I also do, I have found the level of distraction um, is a danger. Yep. Uh, uh, social media, like uh, my writing partner and I, we had our, our YouTube channel and I was like, you know what, we need to stop this because I need to focus on the writing. Yep. Um, this week, I told you I was stressed out and I wasn't doing the work. And I've been reading other people's work in the morning as soon as I get up. I've now said, you know what, I'm going to shut that down. No more reading of anyone else's work for a bit. So that I just, the first thing I do is sit down at the page and write my own stuff. Um, even uh, I've noticed I will like cut out television YouTube, yep. all those kind of things. And and it's hard because it's so easy to get distracted. And it, well, and I think so all of those things, I think I definitely agree with. I think the other side is it's it's easy to um, put off a life. So like people are people are like, oh, I have to write. So I'm going to go clean the house. Like that's the yes. joke. Right. But I think the opposite is true sometimes. Oh, I have to I, I have to uh, clean the house. So I'm going to go write. Or I have to um, talk to this one person. I have to have a really hard conversation with my partner. I'm going to write instead. I'm stressed at work. I'm going to write instead. So I think the, the, the opposite can be true. And I think I actually was that way to some extent when I was like burying myself in writing. It was a way to cope with life and different things like that. And I think I did let some things slide. And so I think what I'd say to anybody watching this is... Um, sometimes you have to look in the mirror and, and have like this honest approach to yourself and ask, ask yourself, what is writing doing for you? What role is writing filling in your life? And I think everyone should always write and continue to write, but is it taking the place of something else you can be doing? And is it, um, and this will be the last thought because we've already gone pretty long. Um, but you know, I have it, so much to say though. <laughs> is it the the primary thing you should be focusing on? Because if you get that primary thing taken care of, if you address that, a lot of times that can make everything else kind of fall into place. And writing, if you're a writer, if you've got the bug, if you've got the curse, then that's going to fall into place. And if you have struggles like this, call it writer's block, call it what you will, but think analytically about it. Don't just think mechanically, oh, it's just I can't write or this or that. But what's really going on? Look at the big picture and how does writing fall into that? So can I I'm going to say one really quick thing. Yeah, uh, it's the idea that that idea of prioritizing. What is the important things in your life? I really like that. So yep. it's not just writing. It's what is what do you want in life? Right. Because it's OK if you want to write, but you have other bigger, higher priorities and you should take um, care of that because we only have a finite amount of time in our day, in our week, in our life. So you should choose accordingly. And that's the one thing I always find that there are some people who want to be writers, but it is not a priority to them. And that's okay. And right. telling a person that that's okay, um, it's, you know, they will i've had those conversations with people and it, it's it's one of those things you just need to look like you said look at it honestly and say is this the thing that i truly truly want or is it abc not writing which is actually down somewhere at x or something like that so so I, th I think that kind of uh, that really addresses it. I, I want to hear f what people have to say in the comments. I want to hear what people have to say on Twitter. If they're watching this this long, um, I think that um, I'm sure people have opinions on this. If they've experienced yeah. it, if others have experienced it, and what they think. So um, if you're watching this still, please comment down below. Um, not only telling us what else you want us to talk about, but also tell us 
what you think about this conversation. Um, and we put in all this effort, so the end of every show is going to be a sh shameless self-promotion for us. I'm going <laughs> to let uh, David Gain do his promotion first. Okay, so go to www.cunyosingain.com. Buy our fantastic young adult mystery series. I always call it a mystery series with teens because sure. a lot of adults really like it. You yep. can also get the shirts. Swag. I have one of those shirts. Yeah, you should wear it one of the shows. Plus, I, we have stickers. Yep. We also have DC's book. Um, uh, uh, WB Welch. WB Welch. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I was Blood, drop. Blood drops. That one looks awesome. Yes. Uh, I've read I, like three or four stories in it. I got to read the rest. It's There's some uncomfortable stories in there, I've got to say. That's the, that's the point, and I'm excited. <laughs> and we do have one other writer coming up in probably the middle of this month. So, Oh, great. More we're very excited more about friends. that. More Cunhas and Gain friends, yes. Awesome. Uh, I am DC Wrighthammer, uh, science fiction thriller writer. Uh, this is Between Two Minds Awakening, book one in my uh, series. And uh, right now, uh, I'm actually celebrating. I'm really close to, I might have hit it, um, 10,000 followers on Twitter, which is a ridiculous number to me. I'm very honored that that many people, of which 30% might be bots. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm honored that people are following me. I'm doing a, a humongous giveaway right now. And Cunos and Gain uh, .com have helped have partnered with me. So if you go to the Twitter, I, I'll link it in the description below. If you go to my giveaway, if you have a book link, post it there. If you buy a book, you actually get two entries for buying a book, and people aren't really doing that. So you can actually sneak in and take over that giveaway if you go to go to the Twitter link that I'm going to put in the description and buy two or three books. I'm going to give you two entries for each book you buy because that's awesome and you're supporting indie authors in the writing community. And um, don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and comment what you think below. Thanks, awesome. everybody, and uh, have a good night. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>